Hi everyone, it's Erin from the Provincial Farmhouse. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm creating some French farmhouse decor for the kitchen. For our first project, I'm going to be using this lovely ceramic pot that I found at the thrift store and also these jars that I've actually taken from my kitchen. They're washed and ready to go. Obviously, these pieces are slick, which means that I was either going to have to brush on some sort of a primer so that paint would stick, but I decided to grab some Rust-Oleum cream spray paint to coat them, and I thought that perhaps that this would be enough, that I would just need to do this step, but in the end, it didn't end up looking exactly the way I wanted. I ran out of one color, so I've gone to another. So this is just going to be a great base coat, and it will be a great surface for my paint to adhere to. If you don't have spray paint, you could use some sort of a primer that you paint on, or you could use a clear matte sealer for this as well. I'm also going to be repeating the same steps on our pot. You can find a full product list in the description of this video below, and you can find these products on our website, theprovincialfarmhouse.com.au. After 24 hours, I'm now coming in with a mixture of Dixie Belle's Sea Spray Texture Additive mixed with Dixie Belle's Chocolate Chalk Mineral Paint. I'm dabbing and stippling this mixture onto my pots and this is going to give us some lovely texture and it's also going to be great to be able to be seen underneath the layer of paint that I'm coming in with afterwards. And now, yes, I know I've already painted these, but this was something that evolved and that's just what happens with your projects as you're going along you find what works and you find what doesn't i'm repeating the same process on the pot Once my paint is completely dry, I'm going to be using Dixie Belle's Drop Cloth Chalk Mineral Paint. I felt like this was quite a beautiful cream color, quite close to the color of crockery. And I am applying that in a dabbing and stippling motion with a chip brush as well. But you'll notice that I am not aiming for full coverage here. I am loving some of that sea spray chocolate mixture peeking through. It will just add to the effect. I'm going to be applying the same paint to all of our pieces that we've put the sea spray on and the beauty of using the spray paint first means that inside of the jars is already painted and the areas where you can see through still look nice so the spray paint definitely saved the hassle of trying to get to the inside of these pieces with paint. Next, I'm going to be using JRV's mini crock stencil pack. I've just gotten these into my shop and I'm so excited to be using them. I've picked this marmalade design first and I'm curving it around my jar and then I'm using some masking tape to hold it in place. Now, I often like to put the masking tape on my shirt a little bit first to take the harsh stickiness off so it doesn't rip my paint off. So I have my stencil down. I'm now using a JRV the stencil brush this is the half inch size and I'm going to dab that paint on I'm also going to be doing a bit of a swirling motion this is Dixie Belle's umber silk mineral paint it has a built-in sealer and I did get a little bit heavy with the paint in certain areas but I'm not worried about that because I'm going to be doing distressing so there's no need to be perfect with this project I'll set that first one off to dry and start work on my second jar. So this is a lovely pure cream design. Again, I'm going to be using some masking tape to hold it in place. And because of how curved this surface is, there is going to be sections of the stencil that are sticking up that I'm going to have to be really mindful about as I am applying my paint. So I actually use my fingers to hold down the stencil in certain areas and I apply quite a bit of pressure to try and minimize the bleeding of the paint underneath but again this does not have to be perfect those old vintage labels on those beautiful jars and crocs were not always perfect and that's the look we're going for here today 
I did go in with a wet wipe here just to dab off some of the excess paint that was pooling a little bit. And again, we're going to distress this, so I probably didn't need to do that. That's just the perfectionist in me. And for our next jar, I'm going to repeat the same process, working in sections, making sure that I have that stencil down and always making sure to offload a lot of my paint onto that cardboard that I've got sitting there. I'm so excited to be using this lovely stencil set. I've been wanting to get it for a little while and waiting impatiently for it to arrive from the US, but we have them in store now if you wanna check them out. I picked a larger design for our pot here because in my mind, I envisioned this as a crock. Now I know it's not exactly like a crock, but I loved the shape and I felt like this stencil really added to that beautiful French farmhouse look. Once my paint has completely dried, I'm going to use some 220 grit sandpaper to distress back the design. So this is going to get rid of any obvious imperfections. It's going to bring some of that sea spray to the front so you'll be able to see it a little bit more and it will just add to that vintage aged effect. After removing the sanding dust, I'm going to seal each of our jars with Dixie Belle's Gloss Clear Coat. This is going to protect the paint, but it's also going to be a great base for our next step. Once my clear coat has dried completely, I'm going to be using Dixie Belle's Au Naturel Voodoo Gel Stain. I'm going to pour a little bit out onto a plastic lid and then I'm going to apply it to my jar. So this is going to give it that antiqued pottery sort of a look here. So I'm going to apply it over the entire jar. That gloss clear coat is going to give me the time to come in with a baby wipe and wipe it back as much or as little as I want. I'm using a baby wipe to wipe off a lot of the excess from the stencil design so we can see all of that lettering clearly. And I'm also going to dab at it so that it's sort of a bit patchy. And again, just adding to that aged feel. When I was thinking about this project, I did look up vintage Crocs and old marmalade jars and a lot of them had this sort of age and patina to them. So it's a lot of fun to be able to achieve something Something similar. Once I've repeated that same process on all of our jars, I'm going to be using IOD's Permanent Black Ink on the Crackle Stamp from the Vintage Textures Stamp Pack. And I'm just lightly pressing in random spots on the jar so that it looks like cracked pottery. So this is very subtle. I'm not pressing too hard. And again, I'm there's no real wrong or right way to do this. It's just wherever you feel that you want to show that age. So I'm going to apply that same stamp to each of our little jars. If you don't have access to this particular stamp, I know there are quite a few crackle mediums on the market that you could perhaps come in with now, or there may even be some stencil options that you could use. Or if you don't like this particular look, you could just leave this step out. On the two smaller jars, I'm now going to add a little bit of twine. That's just going to hide the sections where the jar lids would go on, but I'm not gonna glue it there just in case somebody wants to remove it. And here's a look at the finished projects. I'm really happy with how these turned out. It was so fun to use the JRV mini croc stencils and I feel like these really look like they could be in a French farmhouse kitchen. But let me know what you think of these in the comments. For our next project, I'm going to be using this really cute handmade pig cutting board. Somebody hand cut this out. It looks really primitive and beautiful. I'm going to be using Fusion's milk paint in the color hotel robe with this one. I'm just going to mix up a very small amount of milk paint. This isn't a huge project and you really should only make up what you need as you go. So I'm going to stir it really well and then I am going to be applying it to my pig 
chopping board. My vision for this project is to turn it into a wall hook for the kitchen wall where you can hang up tea towels or utensils. So that's where we're going with this project. So I'm applying a thick coat of the milk paint to the entire piece, just one coat. And then I'm going to use my heat gun to speed up the drying process. I want to get those really fun cracks and chips to give this a real French farmhouse feel. I never get tired of seeing those beautiful cracks and chips appear as you speed up the drying process. It's a lot of fun. I'm now going around the edges of our sweet little pig and applying the milk paint, but I'm not going to be adding it to the back. I will be cleaning that up. There's no point. No one's going to see it. Once my paint has completely dried, I'm going to use a plastic spatula to scrape off all that chippy paint goodness. It's going to give us that wonderful chipped paint effect. Not all of this will chip off. There will still be that lovely crackle to see, but it's definitely giving us those beautiful farmhouse vibes. Next, I'm going to be using JRV's mini grain sack stencils. I'm using this Kroger one, and I started off using the same umber silk mineral paint, but I felt like the brown was a little bit underwhelming in this, so I did decide to switch to Anchor Silk Mineral Paint. This is a pure black. I did go in a little bit heavy, but again, we're going to be distressing it here, so I'm not too worried. So I'm using my JRV half inch stencil brush again for this, and I'm just going to work my way around holding that stencil in place really well and dabbing and swirling the paint on. Once the paint is completely dry, I'm using some 220 grit sandpaper to distress that paint back. This is going to give us that aged finish. To seal my milk paint, I'm using Dixie Belle's Best Dang Wax in Clear. I'm applying it with a brush and then I'm going to buff the excess with a microfiber cloth. To tidy up the back, I'm using that same 220 grit sandpaper to sand off the excess milk paint. This will just give it a tidier look. Next, I'm going to be using some little black hooks that I got from Timu. I will link those in the description below. I felt like the black of these hooks really went well with the anchor silk mineral paint that we used for our stencil design up the top. So I'm going to position three hooks along the bottom and I'm going to attach a small drill bit to my drill and I'm going to line up the little hooks where I want them to go. And then I'm going to make two little holes to get us started and I am just going to be screwing the little screws that come with these hooks in with a screwdriver. I sometimes worry about these little screws that I might strip them if I use the drill. So I just started off with a uh, little hole and then I'm able to go the rest of the way with a screwdriver, but again, to each their own. So I'm going to repeat the same process for each of these. I've used a ruler to help me line up the two on the outer side. Finally, I'm going to attach a sawtooth hanger to the back of this so it can be hung on the kitchen wall. This particular hanger comes with two little nails that you hammer in. Just make sure that whatever nails you're using are not too long for your project. And here's a look at the finished project. I love how this sweet little pig turned out. Those hooks have really given it a functional purpose and the milk paint and the JRV stencil have made it look very French farmhouse. Let me know what you think of this in the comments. Our final project today is this wooden chopping board that I found for a dollar. It has a terrible green paint job on one side, so I'm going to remove the twine that comes with it, and now I'm using my orbital sander to sand off that paint. I want to go with a stained wood look here, but we need to get rid of that paint, so I actually have some 80 grit sandpaper on my sander here, and I'm going to work my way across the board to get rid of that green paint. I'm also 
also going to give the other side a light sand so that this wood is open and ready for stain. To help my stain go a little bit further, I'm lightly misting my wood first with plain water and then I'm applying a coat of Dixie Bell's Tobacco Road Voodoo Gel Stain. This is a water-based stain. It does need raw wood to be able to be applied as a stain. I'm applying that to the entire board and then I'm using a paper towel to rub that in and remove the excess. I am actually going to be doing two coats of this. I'm going to be applying it to the front and back of this board. My vision for this piece was those beautiful old French chopping boards that you see and for this however I am going to be adding some little feet to it so that it is a riser. For the little feet I'm using some wooden beads and I'm going to be staining them with the same Tobacco Road Voodoo Gel Stain, rubbing off the excess with that paper towel and then I'm going to be attaching those with my hot glue gun. Now this is raw wood going onto raw wood so this is going to stick really well and if I had any worries I could always pop a little screw in there or I could come back in with some super glue but honestly the hot glue is doing a great job. To seal my board and also add to the weathered aged look, I'm using some of Dixie Belle's Best Stang Wax in white. I haven't put a clear down yet because I don't mind if there's a little bit of tonal difference, but honestly, it's going on pretty evenly. So I'm just applying it with a microfiber cloth and working it into the grain of the wood, and it's giving this a lovely worn effect. I'm going to do this to the top and bottom and also the little feet. Just in case somebody wants to hang this up in their kitchen when they're not using it, I'm going to use some twine that I've doubled over and I'm going to tie a knot. And here's our finished riser. I love how this turned out. It has a wonderful primitive look, but it's also a very functional piece. Let me know what you think of this in the comments. I hope that you enjoyed today's projects and that it's inspired you to create some French farmhouse decor for your kitchen. Let me know in the comments if you had a favourite project from today. If you enjoyed today's video, I would really appreciate it if you would hit that like button, comment and share it out to a friend that you think might enjoy it. If you haven't already, I would love it if you could hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any of our videos. You can find the products used today on our website, theprovincialfarmhouse.com.au. Thanks for watching.